Hey art fiends, welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special video because we have just hit 8k subscribers. I am completely blown away. I only started posting seriously on this channel a year ago during the start of quarantine and seeing this community grow so fast has just been so amazing and I thank every one of you for all your support and always watching my videos and commenting. I really appreciate it. Because we hit 8k I decided to do a little special Q&A video for you guys as a way to celebrate. A majority of these are from my discord but if this goes well then maybe a future milestone I can do another Q&A when there's more people here. This is gonna be a mix of art and life questions. I don't really know what to expect. I'm just gonna read through this list of questions and say what comes to my mind. <laughs> All right, so first question, what artists inspire you or still inspire me? Uh, funnily enough, I actually made like a mood board for a student. I was tutoring a student and I had her make a mood board of inspiration and I decided to do one with her so she understood what that meant. So I'll put it up. Um, but this was my personal mood board and I had a couple notes too of, you know, things that were common throughout each of the art styles or artists that I was looking at. So this is like all my inspiration. This one's a two-parter, so I'll split it up. What made me get into art? A lot of time holed up in my room as a kid. I would stay in my room alone and for a while that was like making stories and playing with all my, my stuffed animals. I had so many stuffed animals and that hasn't <laughs> changed much. I have even more. I uh, then moved on to drawing. I made like little comics with stick figures. Um, I used to also tell stories with like Pokemon figurines, <laughs> like these, these kind of figurines. This was the late 90s, early 2000s. So there wasn't like internet on a cell phone. I didn't even have a cell phone or a computer of any kind. I had a piece of paper and some pens. And then the second one, do I have any tips for making more original OCs? Uh, I think you're trying to get it as like, how do I not make a Mary Sue? Destroy your characters. Just like brutally hurt their emotions and physical being as well as the emotions and physical being of those around them because emotional growth needs a catalyst. And if you coddle your characters and think of them as your precious little babies and don't actually have them go through a story arc, then they're gonna be too perfect because nothing bad has ever happened to them. That's where the whole Mary Sue really comes from is because they are perfect beings who are super powered and nothing can hurt them. Um, so hurt your characters. Give them real emotions. How would you react if something like this happened to you? You're like, put your own human emotions. Another tip, honestly, is I did a lot of improv. So learning how to act is actually really important for storytelling, for anything. Improv especially was so helpful in learning how to get into the mind of somebody that you aren't because I don't live the lives of my characters. I have to kind of imagine what they would feel in this moment and improv is so helpful. And this is also helpful for people who are just writing too. Also, it helps you get out of your shell a little bit and uh, it's fun. <laughs> How tall am I? I'm so tall that I, uh, I still get carded. So take that information and use it as you will. <laughs> who or what was my first big animation inspiration? I was obsessed with The Lion King as a kid, but that wasn't really what got me to start animating or wanting to like do cartoons. That I attribute to Adventure Time. That show probably changed me forever. Avatar The Last Airbender 2, I think that also really changed me like story-wise like that. Oh my gosh. But like the art of Adventure Time and just like how fun and wild Adventure Time is. Probably the show that made me realize that that's what I wanted to do and not like comics or just straight illustration that I actually wanted to make animation and make like a show. What places in the world would I like to visit? I've been to a lot of the countries that I want to visit already. I would love to go back to them. I pull a list up. This is every country I've been to. So I'm not gonna say any of these, but a lot of them I would go back to and all of my family lives in Italy. So like, I'll probably go back there sooner or later just because my family's there. As for new countries, I'd love to go to Amsterdam and Spain. I'd love to go to Spain. What's one thing about my art style that I want to improve or change in the future as I continue to grow? I've been recently focusing a lot more on shape language and diversifying how my characters look because for the longest time I just drew anime and every character I drew had the same body shape and same face syndrome. It, it wasn't until I think 2019 that I really like found that cartoon style and found a good way to draw fast. Now I'm trying to find a way to make my 
characters more diverse because everyone was very circular. Just always done circles as my shape. So I'm really trying to push that in my designs. I've done a couple, I think my alien designs have really shown it. And I've done some like doodles of characters from the server that people are sharing that I like try to change into some more shapey stuff. I really just want to like push big shapes and make it obvious that these characters look absolutely nothing alike. Who was my biggest mentor as I continued my journey as an artist? I went to this summer camp up in the state of Vermont on a farm in the middle of nowhere. The camp is for high school students only, so I had to be in high school to go there and it was Probably the greatest time. I found my people there. One of my best friends ever I met at that camp. That camp, there was a teacher who ran all the animation classes and he also did like the graphic novel classes. And he was the coolest dude. And we were like his little army of animators. He just like let do whatever, as long as we made an animation. And it was the coolest time ever. And he showed me so many new things that I never would have learned otherwise, specifically about animation, because I didn't know nothing about animation before I took these classes. And it wasn't really about learning like gravity or squash and stretch or anything like that. That's not what we were doing. It was just a, a camp and you were just making animations and it didn't mean they were good, but you were doing it. He just really helped me not be afraid to just go wild with my art. And that was nice. I actually ended up working there as an assistant teacher right after I finished college. I literally graduated college, flew to Israel after my graduation ceremony for birthright. And then the day after I landed back in the States, I uh, drove six hours to Vermont by myself and then slept in the woods the first night that I got there. So it was a wonderful experience and I was a drawing assistant teacher and that was crazy. That drawing teacher is amazing and also taught me so much. I had her as a student and then I was her assistant. The experience of that camp I think changed my life. What's my biggest pet peeve with regards to OCs? So Mary Sue's is something that people commonly talk about, which is like an overpowered character who's there to just like be amazing at everything, um, which is an annoying trope. But I think the trope I hate more than that is the opposite. It's a character who's just every trauma in existence is on this character just because you want something angsty. Which is funny because I've said to hurt your characters before, but there's like a limit. Don't make every single bad thing possible happen to one character. You know, you can spread it out. Make a collection of characters that each have a bad thing happening. And that's just like edgy kid 101. Like it feels as though you're an edgy emo kid who just wants to be edgy for the sake of edge. If you're gonna make someone with a tragic backstory, make it have a reason for existing. You don't just make tragedy for the sake of tragedy. Especially if that tragedy doesn't actually affect their personality. That's another thing. Where their character is like super cheery and haha, I'm so happy. And then you read their backstory and it's like, oh God. Okay, let's uh, let's take a deep breath and back up for a second. It's my biggest regret regarding my growth as an artist. Not doing live models or doing studies from life earlier. My anatomy sucked till like my sophomore year of college. <laughs> it was so bad. I never touched life drawing ever. Unless it was like something I had to do because my school made me like in my high school. You had a project and you had to draw from life. You need to draw from life. You need to study life and understand how to draw natural objects that look real before you can cartoonify them. Because trust me, as someone who did it, I had no idea the structure of a body. Uh, what's my favorite thing to draw? I'm a big fan of like scarves and hoods, which is why like a, a lot of characters will have like a scarf or a hoodie. Big furry coats too. I love big puffy things. So I guess puffy things. Uh, big puffy hair too. I'm down. I love it. What's the best way to start making art your job before having a curriculum in the department? I think what we're getting at is how do you start the steps into making your job art? Well, first, school. If you want that, school isn't for everyone. I will say there are some art jobs that do require a degree. Really graphic design <laughs> really needs you to have a degree. But like if you're gonna be a painter, you don't need a painting degree. Just go paint. Animation's iffy. They like to know you have a degree because that means they probably don't need to train you because you probably know the programs already. If you don't have a degree, it doesn't matter. If they like your art, they like your art. They're not gonna hire you based on your master's degree. <laughs> you can have a master's degree and be a crappy artist. So like, how do you learn best? Because for me, I learn best in a room with a person there that I can ask questions from, which is why college was perfect for me. I can't learn on my own. I will never retain the information as we can attest to me not drawing live 
models for like 10 years of my life. From there, once you decide that, you need to start building a portfolio, which means you need a website. I wouldn't say get like an official website. I have an official website that has like my actual official portfolio on it, but a lot of places will just take an Instagram. So make an Instagram, <laughs> 100% if you don't have an Instagram, use Instagram over Twitter for art, 100% because you can post your art there on Instagram and it'll be perfectly easily visible for someone who wants to see your artwork. Post everything. Like it doesn't even matter if it's done, post it. Just post all of it because it shows your process. And you can even do like the swipey thing on Instagram and have like the final and then show your sketches after that, to show your process, which people like. Or you can show a speed paint if you have like an iPad or something that records it. If you're not going to college, I would say take a couple years to learn on your own. Do some side jobs that are like retail, you know, whatever you need to do to make the money, right? Free time, build your portfolio, take online classes. There's so many online classes you can take, free ones and paid ones if that's what you can afford. YouTube is an amazing resource. You can find everything on this website. Learn for like two years and not apply. And then once you think you have a good foundational understanding of things, learn new programs, learn Photoshop, kids. I know a lot of you are like anti Adobe, but it's the standard for a reason. You need to learn Photoshop if you're gonna work in the industry. I'm sorry to say it because if you get a job, they will have Photoshop and they will not have, I don't know, Krita. And if you wanna be an animator, learn After Effects. I'm not joking. Get Adobe, learn After Effects. It's life changing. If you know After Effects, you can get a job. Just, you will, you'll get a job because it's a really hard program and nobody knows it. And those who do know it are needed. Working in advertising sucks, but it's a really good first foot in the door and look for internships and look for freelance work on the side too. There's so many websites that you can get freelance gigs from. You can get freelance from Craigslist, but like Indeed, uh, Upwork, LinkedIn, make a LinkedIn. I'm serious. It's a weird business social media for like business savvy adults. But if you wanna be an artist in the industry, you need a LinkedIn so that you can apply to jobs and people can see you on LinkedIn and you can link your portfolio on that. Be ready to push yourself. Don't give up. I still don't have my dream job and I'm still hunting. I'm still applying to jobs every day in studios all over the place. Don't look at the people who like are successful immediately because that's not the majority. That's the minority and you'll, you'll get there. That's it. Just keep working. What's the best advice you have for novice artists? Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to the you from yesterday because you aren't in a race with the rest of the world, especially because I know like young people, there might be people who are your age who are amazing and you don't know what to do because you're not there yet. You don't know how their journey has been to get to that place. You don't know what they've done to get to where they are. So you shouldn't be comparing yourself to them because you aren't them. You are on your own special journey of your own. So you should only compare yourself to you. You from yesterday, you from a month ago, you from a year ago, that's what you should be looking at. And that's gonna show you how you've grown as an artist. And that's all the inspiration you need. What's the funniest thing I remember drawing as a kid? I mean, there was the one time when I was a teen, I tried to draw NSFW and it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> Because teen me had never seen anything before. And I was guessing. Again, I never did anatomy studies. <laughs> Let's just say I never did it again. Ever. <laughs> when did I decide to get into education? Um, I didn't really decide <laughs> to get into education. <laughs> education kind of just like fell into my lap. <laughs> um, best way to put it. I would work summer jobs when I was in college. And I worked at camps. I did like arts and crafts. One time I was the assistant drawing teacher at the art camp that I had gone to as a kid. So I understood kind of wrangle kids. Um, so I was applying to just everything because I was between jobs a lot. And quarantine happened, I was jobless. For most of quarantine, I started YouTube. And then the summer came around and I got an email and I was confused because I did not remember applying to whatever <laughs> I had applied to get this email but it was the school that I currently work at and they have summer camps that they were opening up. This was summer 2020, so it was like the start of things opening up for the first time. I went in, they liked me, and I started teaching mostly all the digital stuff. So I started on the camps. When the camps came to an end, I was approached by my boss at the time. She's like, we love you. You know all the programs. You're good with the kids. You're picking this up fast. You want to teach during the school year. 
I was like, yeah, of course I want to teach in the school year. I don't have a job. And it's exciting. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm learning from teaching the kids because I get to see, you know, how they think and figure out ways to help them learn. I see so much potential in these kids. <laughs> they are going places, I can tell you that. If I were to live in one of my OCs universes, which one and why? So out of like all my OCs, one of them is just our world. So I'm not going to pick that one. Um, the other one is a dystopian fantasy world where a gang secretly runs the entire world and the a leader corrupts and rich and powerful and everybody else is impoverished. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to live in that one. Let's just say that. Uh, so I'm going to pick the space one because it's the future and space technology exists and that's fun. What was my least favorite thing to draw but's now something I enjoy? Hands. Hands. Hated hands. I used to hide them behind the back. I mean, who didn't do that? But I now have a good way of drawing them and I love hands. I, I can whip out a hand real fast, but it has to be in my style. I have to draw hands one specific way. He's back. The start of the show. Come in. This is Pepper. You want to say hi? He hates being held. Okay. <laughs> this was a bad idea. Hey, Pat. Okay. Pepper, you're just going to be in all my videos. What's my favorite OC to draw? Uh, Zaheer. He's everything I want in a character design. Which OC do I hate to draw but love their character? There's a bunch of aliens in my space universe that I just don't draw because they're background characters. I feel like out of some of them, like the robot, uh, she's just okay. She, they? I think I made it a they recently. I changed its gender. Um, it's a robot. Very basic. I'll put them up. Block. Boring. It's a robot. But they're interesting because like they're a robot so it'll process emotion. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. I try to draw on designs I like. What non-digital art medium do I prefer to use? Uh, I love watercolor. I love watercolor. This is my watercolor palette. Um, I bought, it's like probably like 10 bucks that I bought at like some supply store. This is a newer one. It's been a little used. You can see from the paint on the side. Uh, so it's gotten some use, but I had another one before this that had less colors and I <laughs> destroyed that palette. And I have these brushes. These are awesome. You uh, fill it with water. You can twist this. You fill it up with water in this thing, and then the inside gets water. And then you just have a watercolor brush on the go. Wow. This one is destroyed because I use it a lot. But yeah, you just squeeze it, and the water fills the tip of the brush, and then you get watercolor. These things are amazing. I have two more of these of different sizes. Um, the brush sizes. I uh, don't break the bank for my art supplies. The last time I did that was when I was into Copics. Uh, and I will never again be into Copics <laughs> because I destroyed my bank account buying Copics. They are pretty markers, but not worth <laughs> I also like ink. A wet ink. Ink. Yes. Or I uh, should probably recognize it as a little well. Like this, wet ink. So, uh, use that plus watercolor combined. <laughs> nice. This is a Ponzi. Um, I have two of them. One is a lot smaller than the other, uh, but they are really cool. They're brown, as you can tell, but there's just something about the way it draws. It's like halfway between charcoal and lead. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, if you want a cool new pencil to try, try Conti. With these, you will need, um, if they're really fat, you will need an X-Acto knife to sharpen it. So if you're too young, maybe don't use a Conti because X-Acto knives are dangerous. Uh, what's my sign? Eridan. That's, that's my sign. Do I think YouTube will ever become my full-time job? I hope not. Never. Oh, dear God, no. No, thank you. I'm okay. Are you a workaholic? <laughs> no. <laughs> I procrastinate like <laughs> crazy. And then I whip something out in two hours and it usually has no mistakes. And I uh, then take a nap for five hours. What kind of music do I listen to? All the music, except for country. What song would I recommend? Uh, AJR's new album just came out and uh, I've been jamming to World's Smallest Violin way more than all the other songs. So probably that one. Good album, listen to it if you haven't heard it yet. What's your advice on starting a series on the internet, like a YouTube series or a comic? You should spend more time planning the project than you are making the project. If your planning time is less than the actual time it took you to make the project, it's gonna be a shitty project. It feels sometimes like if you're not creating content and putting it out there every day that you are invalid, and that's not true. People exist 
outside of the internet. Take your time to make what you're making as good as it can be before you let the world see it. And I highly suggest you get peer review. So what that means is as you write, or as you start creating whatever you're creating, send it to other artists. You can use my server if you need advice because that's what it's there for. But there's other art servers out there too that you could join to get feedback on. Take feedback and be open to change things as you go. The first draft is not your last draft and you should have a lot of drafts before you post it to the world to see. What advice would I give on Minecraft? I've never played, so I, I got nothing for you, sorry. What app do I draw on? I don't draw on an app. <laughs> um, I use Adobe on my computer, so Photoshop. It's a program, it's not an app. I do have an iPad and I use a program called Art Studio Pro. Big fan, superior to Procreate in every way possible. Procreate sucks and I don't like Procreate. Art Studio Pro is amazing and I love it and everyone should convert to Art Studio Pro. I'm just putting it out there into the ether. So when I use my iPad, I use our studio. But as for my work work, I'm not going to be making my studio grade <laughs> work on my iPad. I use all of the Adobe Suite to edit all my things and animate and Storyboard Pro for storyboarding. My favorite game and my least favorite game. I love the Fire Emblem series. I'm obsessed with the Fire Emblem series. Here's my little babies. I also have a Corrin Nendoroid up there. I have this dancer, Anigo. And I also have my sweet baby boy, uh, Ash, who I love. I also made my own standee for myself of my uh, forever husband, Longcube. A couple of Fire Emblem stickers on my laptop. But then down here, those are new because I just got new charms. I have a lot of Fire Emblem charms. Most of my keys is just Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say Fire Emblem. As for which Fire Emblem game, that's really hard. Uh, Echoes was a banger. I will say every Fire Emblem game is good except for Fates. Fate sucks. Least favorite game? Fates may be on one of my least favorite game lists. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna keep playing it. So I, it's hard for me to think of a game that I played all the way through that I don't like except for Fates. Because <laughs> if I don't like something, I will stop consuming it immediately. Which of my OCs is the most like myself? Which do you, ew. Okay, I'm gonna just read the first half of this question because the word kin has a lot of bad connotations and really bad history and should not be used uh, by the community at large in the way that has been normalized. And if you don't know anything about kinning and the history behind that term, I highly suggest you do research into the topic of what kinning really is and what goes behind it and the bad things that comes with using that word. I like the first half better, which is which one do you relate to yourself more, which is the correct term we should be using and not be using the word kin. Thank you very much. Okay, so out of the OCs that are most like myself, none of them. <laughs> I don't like to make stories about myself because I'm boring. I have a very boring normal life and normal life experiences. There's nothing interesting or unique about me. Usually I don't really make myself into characters, so I don't have anything in common with like a majority of my characters. I'm an extrovert, so like my character Aaron is super extroverted, so that might be the only thing we have in common, but like I'm not a super genius and he's a super genius. I'm really stupid, <laughs> so I don't think that we have any of that in common, um, but maybe just our excitable personalities. Are you part of the LGBT plus community? And if so, what are you? I am a letter, but it's not a letter on your list. So I'll let you figure that out. What are my thoughts on the emoji movie? Trash or cash? <laughs> Trash, ew, gross. Pineapples on pizza, nasty, get out of here. No, ew, you're talking to a New Yorker. What would you think I'm gonna say? What is your favorite nostalgic TV show? Recently, I remembered a show I used to watch as a kid. I pushed it to the back of my mind because I didn't retain what this show was until recently when I was talking to some people about things we watched as children. I couldn't remember the name of it, so I texted both of my brothers and my mom. My mom couldn't remember it, and the moment I texted my brothers, my younger brother immediately knew what it was, because of course he did. It's called Crash Box. It's on HBO. It was made for little kids, but it was like a game show with stop motion animation, and it was disgusting and amazing. And as a kid, my brothers and I watched every single episode over 
and over and over again. And we thought there was like five plus seasons. It felt new every time I watched it. There's only two seasons of this show. <laughs> I was rewatching it and even as an adult, I'm like, this, this slaps. And my older brother, when I told him about the show and he also forgot that the show existed, <laughs> told me that he started showing his girlfriend Crash Box because she's never heard of it. And now he's watching Crash Box again too. So I guess everyone should go and watch Crash Box if you have HBO. Stop motion is a dead art and this show is a masterpiece. If you could recreate any movie, which one would I choose and what would I change or keep? I think something that disappointed me was Toy Story 4. I think I just had very high expectations from the Toy Story series because 1 through 3 were all amazing. Fourth one was good. It didn't hold up to the Toy Story hype, I guess. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I like the conclusion, how like Woody got to move on, but I feel like the process of getting there was a little weird. That's my opinion on Don on Ropa. <laughs> oh God, do you really want to know? It's a fun game, but it's not a good game. <laughs> Too many people in the Don and Ropa fandom like hold it to such a high regard where it's kind of like their entire life is this game, but it's really not well written. <laughs> it, it has a lot of moments that are not good, <laughs> but it's fun. And I think that's all you can ask for in a game is for it to be fun. I enjoy the characters too. The characters are probably the best part of the game, but there's a lot of weird plot choices. <laughs> so I'm not like in the fandom. If you're trying to ask, like, I really don't care about Don and Ropa. I was a huge Huge comma, you know, sure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. If you do really enjoy Don and Ropa, I highly suggest you check out the Zero Escape video game series. The creator of that game is like besties with the Don and Ropa creator, and they actually have created their own game studio together, so that's exciting. The game is better. It's just as weird as Don and Ropa, but like grounded in reality a little better. Characters are awesome. I'm in love with Junpei, and I just think it's a better game. I think by watching Zero Escape or playing it, you'll realize what I'm talking about when I say that Don and Ropa is not the best game. What are some things I like to do besides drawing? I like to play video games. I play Genshin Impact daily. I gotta get my daily rewards. And I've been stuck on Bravely Default 2. I've been stuck on a boss for about three months now, but that's okay. Um, I like going on walks and hiking. I nap a lot. I read a lot of fan fiction. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you guys, like a lot of fan fiction. But no one's gonna guess what my ship is that I read a lot of. If you're on my Discord, you probably know what the ship is. I actually haven't really talked a lot about where they're from in this video. So uh, if you figure out my OTP that I read fan fiction of every single day, <laughs> I will tell you in the comments that you got it right. And I like to read comic books. I don't read real books. I just read comics and manga. Do I like the Persona series? Yes, I do like the Persona series. My favorite game was 4. I haven't really seen much of 5 because I never played it myself and all I know of 5 is what I saw my roommate play in college. So I'm not the most knowledgeable of 5, but 4, four was my fave. My favorite character was Yosuke. Do I have a favorite animated movie? If so, why? Animated movie. The Lion King was my favorite movie growing up as a kid and it's still my favorite Disney movie. To this day, as for modern animated movies, Spider-Verse is a visual masterpiece. So Spider-Verse is probably up there for like modern. How do I manage stress? Take breaks, but not long breaks. Usually when you get overwhelmed because you have a deadline or something and you're stressing about getting to the deadline, you don't take any breaks because the deadline's coming. But the way that I find that helps me not stress is to take like mini breaks. So that means maybe take like a minute or two to like scroll on your phone and distract yourself with social media or go get a snack. Go maybe watch a video without doing something else on the side. Take a little walk around the block, you know, to go outside and get some fresh air. Just do something really short that will be over in like 20 minutes or less. Come back and you'll have a fresh mind, fresh eyes, less stress, <laughs> and you'll be able to go right back into working. What is my favorite drawing that I've done? I talked about this in my video about tracing, which if you did not watch my tracing video, please watch that video because this face won't be a surprise. It's this, this drawing, I still love it. It's on all my business cards. It's my mom's favorite drawing too. So I think that says something. Do I have an OC that I hate? I mean, like I make villain characters that like you're supposed to hate because they suck. My character Zaheer has an extremely tragic backstory. 
that I cannot share with you here or else I will get demonetized. The people who hurt him in the past suck. <laughs> I've designed all of them because they have to look like something. Doesn't mean I like them. All right, this is the last question. Where do I hope to see myself in five years? I hope to be working on an animated TV show as a storyboard artist. It's been my goal since I graduated and I hope to be there. And that probably means I won't really be doing YouTube anymore. That's it, that's the end of the q and A. It's all the questions. If I skipped your question, it's probably because it was very similar to a question I already answered. So I didn't want to answer the same thing twice. This might be a long video, sorry. I hope you guys liked this. I kind of just rambled for a while. Maybe this was interesting to listen to. Maybe it made a good podcast. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go back to regular videos after this. Thank you guys for 8K subs, don't even know what to say. If you guys wanna support me in other ways besides just like being here on YouTube, I have a Patreon. You get a lot of raw sketches and some sweet paints and like behind the scenes stuff. I haven't posted anything video related just yet because I don't really know what to post video related, but a lot of my like actual art art uh, you'll get. Otherwise, you can always just follow me on social media. All of this is linked in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for asking all the questions. I can't wait to read whatever you say in the comments and if somebody can guess my OTP, I'll let you know that you got it right. That's it. That's the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. All the things that the YouTubers say. Peace.